Hi, I'm Warren Bjornsson from the Service Training Center of Electromotive Division in LaGrange, Illinois. The purpose of this video is to introduce the electronic fuel injection system known as MDEC, which is being applied to new production locomotives. In this video, we'll look at the various components that make up the system, the operation of MDEC, and how this system fits in with the other systems on the locomotive. Troubleshooting will be handled in a separate video, troubleshooting the MDEC system. Shown in this video is a basic system for illustration purposes only. Always consult the proper engine maintenance manual for your application. MDEC stands for Electromotive Diesel Engine Control. This system has been developed to meet very specific goals for the EMD engine, namely improved fuel economy reduced emission levels, improved reliability, and reduced maintenance tasks. Additional benefits of electronic fuel injection control include enhanced diagnostic capabilities and real-time monitoring of many engine and injection functions. Let's begin our look at MDEC by becoming familiar with the components that make up the system. The electronic control modules, or ECMs, are the heart of the MDEC system. These modules are sealed microprocessor units, responsible for actual injection control. The software program contained in the ECMs allows them to interpret input signals from the control system with various engine sensors, make fueling decisions based on these inputs, and operate the electronic fuel injectors based on these decisions. Since each module has the ability to control eight fuel injectors, the actual number of units found on an engine depends on the number of cylinders. These modules may be found mounted on the sides of the engine or on the center front of the engine. Note that although the units are sealed, they have a number of ports to allow connection to various system components through internal and external wiring harnesses. The next stop on our MDEC tour is the top deck area of the engine, where we find the electronic fuel injectors. These unitized injectors are located one per cylinder in the same location as the previous mechanical models. Although they are similar in appearance and perform the same basic function, you can see that the mechanical lay shaft linkage has been replaced by an internal injector wire harness. This harness allows control of each individual injector by the ECM. We will look at the injectors in more detail when we discuss the system operation. There are a couple of other differences in this area as well. You can see that the fuel manifolds are quite a bit larger now. And the solid fuel jumper lines have been replaced by larger diameter flexible fuel jumpers. These changes aid in a proper supply of fuel to the new injectors. Note also that the overspeed trip mechanism has been removed from the MDEC equipped engines. Electronic control of the injectors has eliminated the need for this mechanical backup system. Since MDEC was adapted from automotive technology, the ECMs operate on a system voltage of 24 volts DC. Located in the AC cabinet towards the rear of the locomotive, is the power supply that steps down the 74 volt DC locomotive voltage to 24 volts DC for use by MDEC. The power supply is equipped with two indicator LEDs, a green one to indicate proper 24 volt supply, and a red one that will illuminate in the case of overcurrent problems. Attached to the side of the power supply is the interface panel, 
that translates standard 74-volt DC governor solenoid control signals into 24-volt DC speed signals for use by MDEC. By using the interface module, MDEC will function with the control system in an identical manner to a Woodward governor equipped engine. The interface panel is also equipped with an access port to allow use of diagnostic equipment such as the PC reader program with a laptop computer. Use of these diagnostic tools is covered in the troubleshooting video. By the way, there is another diagnostic port located beside the EM2000 locomotive control computer in the locomotive cab. MDEC relies on various sensors to monitor the engine's performance and condition. These sensors can be broken down into three main types. System sensors, used for determining engine speed and crankshaft position. Performance sensors, used to collect pressure and temperature data. And protective sensors, used to assess the engine's condition similar to the protection offered by the Woodward Governor and Engine Protective Device. The system sensors are actually two magnetic pickups mounted on a special spring-loaded bracket at the left rear corner of the engine. By reading timing plates attached to the flexible coupling disc, these pickups feed the ECM's precise engine speed and crankshaft position. In order to make intelligent fueling decisions, MDEC needs to look at several conditions on the engine. Through the performance sensors, the ECMs will look at fuel temperature and pressure, and air temperature and pressure, or boost pressure. The system is able to adjust fueling rates and injection timing to compensate for changes in any of these parameters. Just as we did on a Woodward governor-equipped engine, the engine must be protected against damage caused by a failure of a critical support system. Therefore, MDEC uses sensors to monitor oil pressure, oil temperature, coolant water pressure, and crankcase pressure. Should any one of these items indicate a potentially threatening condition, MDEC is programmed to shut the engine down, just like a governor would. All the sensors we've just looked at are mounted in several locations on the engine and are connected to the ECMs by external wire harnesses. It's similar to the previous mechanical system, but there are some differences. Let's follow the the fuel flow through the system, pointing out the changes. From the fuel tank, fuel is pulled through a suction strainer to the fuel pump. The fuel pump is now driven by an AC motor to eliminate brush maintenance and is normally rated for 6.5 gallons per minute. MDEC systems are equipped with a thermostatic modulating valve set at 98 degrees Fahrenheit and a fuel preheater to ensure proper fuel flow through the system. The 13 micron primary fuel filters micron rating and are protected by a 120 psi bypass valve. Should the secondary the filters plug, the fuel will be returned to the tank instead of circulating through the injectors have been increased in size for greater flow and have a 30 psi bypass valve. The secondary filter, depending on the application, the secondary filters may be mounted on the front center of the engine. Filters or engine mount filters have been redesigned. The filter elements now have a five micro corner of on the right front